So you're looking through the two times anamorphic lenses. This is the Kato set by Blazard. Now they offer incredible value because they are so cheap for what they actually are. But the amount of character you get out of these absolutely incredible i'm filming on the s5 2x as well which is 6k open gate makes it amazing for two times anamorphic lens but we've got a lot to get through in this video so let's get it now when it comes to these anamorphic lenses you really do have to get used to the amount of character that's on these like they are nice and sharp in the center and they start to soften out in the edges even when it comes to the top parts of the frame so if i am more down here in the middle of the frame it's so much sharper than it is right at the top here. Same thing out to these edges. And that is one thing that I really, really love about these that I don't actually have with any other lenses that I have. And uh, you just have to make, you know, take it into consideration when it comes to the T-stops as well. So stopping it down will obviously make it a bit sharper, increase that depth of field so you can get a little bit more in focus. Because if you do shoot wide open, this is a T2.0. It's actually quite soft and really hard to get in focus. But you just have so much character. It looks incredibly different compared to spherical lenses. So, I wanna show you guys the difference between spherical and anamorphic lenses. Now, I'm filming on the Sony a7 IV. I've got the 50 mm uh, f1.2 G Master lens. Now, it's a 16 by nine sensor, so it's perfectly fine with those lenses. But when I throw this one on, this is a two times anamorphic lens. On a 16 by nine sensor, it's not maximized like, you know, the Lumix S5 Mark II uh, X. And this allows me to do 6K open gate, so. These lenses definitely are better on this. Not to say that you can't use, you know, these anamorphic lenses on a 16 by nine sensor. It's just better that you have open gate. Now I want to show you guys the difference between, you know, the bokeh shape, the distortion, how it renders the image. And obviously this is autofocus. So everything's gonna be tack sharp. Uh, I can move around the frame and still be in focus. Whereas obviously manual focus lens, you're gonna need a first AC focus puller, cinematographer, someone behind the camera manning it, or set the focus and try and stand in the exact same spot. But uh, yeah, let's throw these uh, 55mm T2.0 on and see the difference. And now this is the 55mm T2.0 Kato lens, and you could already tell it's completely different to the G Master lens. Like it's in the exact same spot, it's on the exact same camera, but it just looks different. The color rendering is different. Obviously the bokeh shape is more oval, there's more distortion, and obviously the wider uh, field of view as well because it's a 16 by nine sensor. It's not on my Lumix uh, S5 2X, and this is what's going to get you heaps of width because of, uh, well, it's going to maximize the uh, two times anamorphic lens because of the three by two sensor and the ability to record that three by two sensor in 6K. Um, but you can already see the differences between it. And let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like it's, uh, it is a desired look. I absolutely love anamorphic lenses. There is not a job that I just want to shoot on anamorphic lenses. I just want to use them all the time, but obviously you can't. It's, it, you have to pick the right tool for the right job. And uh, depending on your client and what their needs are and what the overall vision is, is how you're actually gonna be choosing some of these lenses. But yeah, I'd really love to know your thoughts, but wow, it is uh, it is quite polar opposites when we actually compare it side by side. So when it comes to these T-stops, the 55 mil is at T2.0, you've got the 85 at T2.8, and then you have the 125 at T4. Now, the 40 mil I don't actually have with me at the moment, that's meant to be coming after, but that is uh, part of the four lens kit. Now, one amazing thing that I do like about these anamorphic lenses is the case as well. It is a really, really nice solid Pelican case. Just the design inside, it fits in there absolutely perfect, but it's so much smaller than most anamorphic lens uh, cases. They tend to be you know, quite compressed and they lay them long ways. It's actually more beneficial to put them upright because when you are transporting, you're actually meant to separate the aperture blade. So you actually put it to infinity focus and then you actually set it to wide open to try and open up the aperture blades. So when traveling around, the aperture blades aren't sort of knocking on each other. Apparently, that's what they taught us in film school is how you're actually meant to transport them. But it's just a nice 
case. I just love and appreciate the small things that some of these companies actually go through to produce some decent lens kits. Now, one massive thing to take advantage of these two times anamorphic squeeze lenses is having open gate. You really need a camera that has open gate to take the most advantage out of the corners because if you are shooting on a 16 by nine or even a 17 by nine sensor, you're just going to get incredibly long horizontals and you're just gonna have so much wasted space. Your set design needs to be absolutely on point. Like I've got the trees here in the foreground to at least sort of cut off some of that width over there. I've got the, uh, the lighting over there sort of motivated from the window. So I do have a light outside pointing in. I've got a gobo set projector projecting this and I've got a key light as well and I've got a rim light. So it's a quite uh, overcomplicated, but still this is how you get this kind of image uh, for this particular scene. And yeah, when it comes to this kind of width, you really just have to be smart about your mise-en-scene, your set design, production design, everything that's in the scene. And when it comes to the full size of the Kato's, like they aren't really massive lenses, especially when it comes to two times full frame anamorphic lenses. This is the 125 T4. Now, generally they would be like this big, literally not, no, no word of a lie there. And uh, it's, it's only like maybe a centimeter taller than the 85. And similar thing with the 55, 55 is slightly smaller. I think the 40 is once again smaller than that or very similar to the 55. Now, one of the main benefits that I love about the Kato set obviously is the PL mount. Now, PL mount, I talk about it all the time because it just gives you the ability to adapt it to any camera. And PL is kind of like the cinema standard because you can use them on RE cameras, you can use them on RED cameras, the Venice, uh, and all those, you know, Panavision and all those sort of things as well. But I've got it on my Lumix, I've got the PL to L mount, but I've also got PL to E mount, so I can put it on obviously my FX6. Um, but yeah, definitely it's a more of a solid mount as well. So you aren't gonna to put too much stress on your actual mount itself. If it's a native PL, now if you are adapting, that does make the lens longer and one of the great things as well is that they have included uh, the, the obviously the lens support and you shouldn't really need that, but it's kind of good just to use the lens support anyway, because you know you're going to get really nice solid connection between you know your lens and your focus motor and just making sure that everything is perfectly sturdy. So when it comes to the coverage of these lenses, uh, apparently the 85 and 125 has a image circle of about 36 by 24, whereas the 40 mil and uh, the 55 mil that you're looking at through right now covers an image circle of 28.8 by 24. Uh, so it's not 100% full frame, so you will get vignetting on the sides, but to uh, to put this on a 2.4 to one ratio timeline anyway, you're going to be chopping a little bit off the sides. Now this is 6K open gate, so it does make things a little bit better. Um, but you're still going to have to chop off the side. So it doesn't necessarily matter too much. It just means that you can't sort of move the image side to side a little bit through that timeline as much, uh, even though then you're going to get epic distortion and epic uh, character on those outside. So you might want to chop those off anyway. Um, so using these on full frame cameras will be absolutely no problems. Large format cameras, I don't know, I don't have a large format camera, so I can't actually test that. Uh, but it, I, I'd imagine these two would. And uh, the other two, if you do film wide open, that's probably when uh, you won't be able to see it. But if you stop it down a little bit, that's probably when you'll see you know, the image circle sort of cutting in on the sensor. Now, when it comes to the close focusing distance, this is the 125 T4, and this actually has a distance of 2.7 feet, which is roughly about 82 centimeters away from the sensor. Now, for anamorphic lenses, that's pretty much standard. If you do want to get any closer, then that's probably when you're going to have to get some diopters, and uh, that's where you're going to be able to get closer. But with diopters, uh, you're definitely going to have to stop it down because your depth of field becomes far more shallower and it becomes extremely difficult. But this is what uh, filmmakers have been doing for decades using diopters or close up filters on these kind of lenses. 
So this is a close-up filter right now on the 125, and this is very close. And you can see the depth of field is really, really shallow. You can also see the bokeh balls in the background just over here. Oh, I'm blocking it out. There we go. Um, so it should be focusing just on the front here of my iPhone. Um, and yeah, I'm in the background right here. Now the close focusing distance is pretty much the same on the 55 and 85 and 125. Apparently the 40 mil is the one that you can actually get a lot closer um, at 1.6 feet, which is pretty close. Um, but you know, it really just depends on how you're actually gonna be utilizing it. That is a wide lens because a 40 mil is kind of like a 20 mil horizontal when it's a two times anamorphic squeeze. And I'm not sure if you're gonna be getting that close, but it could you know, go well with some really creative work. So the flaring on these lenses are the neutral flare. So essentially it takes on the color of the light source. So if it's a tungsten light source, it'll appear a little bit more, you know, tungsten and warm. If it's a cooler light source, it'll appear sort of bluish, you know, so on and so forth. So it really just depends on what you like. They're not crazy strong flares, but they do actually look the best and the most natural I've seen when it comes to anamorphic lenses. And it really just depends on your own personal preference and taste anyway. Now, I don't wanna to dive too deep into the lens testings, but you can see right here, this is on the a7 IV, which is the 33 megapixel full frame sensor. It does vignette around the corners. So this is the 55 mil, like I said, when it comes to the 55 and 40, they have a slightly smaller image circle, but in the center, it's actually pretty sharp and you can see that it does soften out to the corners. But if you do stop it down, you know, roughly about T4 or it's sort of T5, 6, that's when it reaches like a really good happy medium in terms of sharpness. It just depends on what you prefer. Now, 85 mil, you can see it's actually relatively sharp in the center. Same thing, slightly soft out in the corners and does sort of sharpen up at T4, T5, 6. And the 125 is pretty sharp in the center and same thing, relatively soft out in the corners. And then obviously T5.6 and T8, it definitely sharpens up quite a lot. So it really just depends on what you prefer in terms of look. But the best thing about these lenses is to try and find your favorite T-stop in terms of character and overall sharpness and what you like about the image. Now these lenses are currently on pre-order for 4,599 US, which is really amazing for the full lens kit, which brings them just over 1,100 US, which is an incredible value for what you get. And according to Blazer, they will be ready to ship in November. So look, overall, in my opinion, they are the best two times anamorphic lenses you can get right now for full frame cameras, you know, just over 4,500 USD for the whole kit. That is incredible amounts of value. You can't really find that anywhere else, especially with this kind of character, this kind of build quality that Blazer actually offer. I mean, they're doing some incredible things, you know, specifically with the Remus line as well, the 1.5 times anamorphics, but two times anamorphics. I mean, how can you say no to something like this? And I hope you found this video useful because I tried to use this lens throughout the whole video. And uh, yeah, just so you guys can see, you know, what the characters are like and how these actually, you know, look. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you guys found it useful. I will put a link in the description below so you can check this one out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.